morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning, my church. Good morning, church. Hi. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. My name is Reverend Mark Scholl, and I'm the pastor of this fantastic community. This community that we call Path Parish, which is a combination of two different churches here in Hudson County, New Jersey. Community Church of Hoboken and Christ Church of Jersey City. And today we actually are starting a brand new sermon series called Naming God in the Streets, where we're taking a look at pieces of scripture and relating them to current events, things that are going on within the world right now, things that are going on within the news, to see how scripture can guide us, how ancient peoples might have lived the same things that we are living right now, and how they can guide us into a greater understanding of who God is and where God is calling us to be. When you're here with us, no matter what time of day it is, whether it is first thing in the morning or the last thing that you do at night, you are a part of community. That's right, no matter where you're coming from or where you're going, you are a part of community whenever you are here with us. And we open our doors, both virtual and physical, to all people, because we believe that God's grace reaches out and holds people close, regardless of race, gender, economic status, social status, sexual orientation, because God opens doors to all people. All people. All people. That's right. All people. That means you. So let's get started with worship. Let's uh, turn up the music. You know, feel free to grab a candle and light it. Make the space more intimate for you as we come together in this place to create community. So let's join together in our opening music. We are singing for the Lord is our light. We are singing for the Lord is our light. We are singing for the Lord is our light. We are singing for the Lord is our light. We are singing, singing, we are singing, singing, we are singing for the Lord is our light. We are singing, singing, we are singing, singing, we are singing for the Lord is our light. See a humble kukanyen kwenko. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians 
Friends by our love We will work with each other We will work side by side We will work with each other We will work side by side And we'll guard human dignity And save human pride And they'll know we are Christians By our love, by our love Yes, they'll know we are Christians By our love All praise to the Father From whom all things come And all praise to Christ Jesus God's only Son And all praise to the Spirit Who makes us one And they'll know we are Christians By our love, by our love Yes, they'll know we are Christians By our love Amen to that. Now let's join together in a prayer, and our opening prayer, as read by Jenny. Lord of the sea and sky, you know there are forces which compete for our attention, clamour for our time, create chaos in our lives, and quiet the good you seek to construct. They seek to be our masters. But you are not a God of division, but justice. You call us in the night to be the voice for the voiceless, and stamp out oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. We are here today, master of all, because you continue to call us to create heaven on earth. Amen. And now let's open up our hearts and minds to hear a piece of scripture from the gospel according to Matthew. Matthew 6, 22 to 24. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Thanks be to God. Now, I just want to take a couple of quick seconds to give thanks to each and every one of you. During these last two weeks, I was on renewal leave, which was an opportunity for me to reset, to re-energize my soul, uh, which was very helpful uh, to allowing me to be a better pastor for each and every one of you. Uh, so I give thanks for that. Um, it gives me a chance to uh, take a step forward into 2021 and be the best pastor that I can possibly be for you. Here at this church, we recognize that questions are important. We recognize that conversation is important. These two things, when they're combined together, allow us to understand more about who God is. So that's why we take a couple minutes each and every time we gather to answer a question. You know, we'll offer a question to you. It gives you a chance to think about it and reflect on it. If there are people that you're watching this with to discuss the question with them or to even uh, drop uh, your answers to the question in the comments below or off to the side. This is an opportunity for us to grow within ourselves and to understand where God is within the world. So today's question is this. When, was some, when did someone notice that you did something brave? When did someone notice that you did something brave? So let's think about that. Let's reflect on that. And let's have a conversation together. We'll come back in a couple minutes uh, and we'll continue on with our worship service this morning.
find myself wondering sometimes who I would have been during the Civil Rights Movement. I wonder if I would have rode the buses like the Freedom Riders or marched for racial equality. I wonder if I would have stood up to people who said that people of color could only drink out of certain water fountains or go to certain schools. I wonder if I would have heard Reverend King speak and be uplifted and be excited and be ready to march with him arm linked hand in hand I wonder if I would have read propaganda and thought that this man was nothing but a rabble rouser. I wonder. There's a passage in the Gospel of Matthew that starts off by saying something like, the eyes are the lamp of the body. Now this is different than something that we're used to saying, that when you look deep into somebody's eyes, a lover's eyes, a child's eyes, or you might say the eyes are the windows to the soul. For people who were alive during Jesus' time, for people in Matthew's community, they believed that the eyes were like lamps. Like wherever and wherever you looked, you shined a light onto the world. So if your light was for good, and your eyes saw nothing but good, you could create nothing but good. But if your eyes were filled with darkness, with hate, with resentment, that's what you'd cast on the world. The passage goes on to say that you can't serve two different masters. You can't love one thing so much so and love something that is at the opposite of what it is goes on to say that you can't love God and love wealth. The word wealth here is translated for, from the word mammon, which means money. It could also mean possessions. But the author here in Matthew was trying to set up two different things side by side to show that you couldn't have two masters within this world. Because if you loved wealth and wealth alone, that you only wanted to gather as much money that, as you possibly could at the expense of others, there's no way that you could love God. Because within Matthew's time, much like now, it was considered a virtue to be able to take what you had and return it back to God's people to give to the community in whatever way you could possibly could in order to make the community a better place. Jesus here, through Matthew, is saying that you can't have two masters that are on opposite sides of the spectrum. You can't love God and love wealth. Now today, if we were to, when we read that piece of scripture, we can, put, we can change out wealth to mean just about anything that is opposite of who God wants us to be. You can't love God and hate your neighbor. You can't love God and look down on people who are homeless. You can't love God and not want fair housing for all people. You can't love God and want to push out 
people who are coming to this country who are immigrants. You can't love God and want to put children in cages. You can't love God and be a white supremacist. You can't love God if there is darkness within your eyes. Because you will see darkness wherever you go. This passage invokes something in us that calls us to see the world in new light. To open our eyes to injustices within the world and create newness within it. To create hope within it. To create peace within it. And that's where Dr. King was going throughout his entire ministry. He was focused on nonviolence in everything that he did. He wanted to create a world where there was harmony racially, economically, politically. And he took all the steps that he possibly could to do it nonviolently. He learned from people like Mahatma Gandhi, from Howard Thurman, from Bernard Russell, Bernard Russell. These were people who sought to bring about peace within this world, not by violence, but by acts of compassion. Dr. King says that any violence that we do now, the peace that it could create is fleeting. Because that peace only came about because of violence, because of war, because of hurt, and because of pain. And those stains are on us if we don't find a way to create peace within our world nonviolently. A week and a half ago, people from around the country gathered on the steps of our capital, pushing their way in to create havoc, mayhem, to incite fear within each and every one of us. And some of those people carried signs. They carried crosses to show others that they believed that God was on their side. Nothing could be further from the truth. While I believe God loves each and every one of them, God does not stand for violence. God does not stand for hate. God does not stand for nooses or guns. God does not stand on the side of people who want to tear down communities, especially communities of color. And God doesn't stand for us when we sit on the sidelines and don't speak up. I wonder how I would have reacted if I were alive during the civil rights movement. I need to keep that in the forefront of my mind now and today in this time to hold my feet to the fire when I see acts of injustice happening within the world, when I see hate speech bubbling up from, from the internet, when I hear friends and family putting someone down because of the color of their skin, 
I need to keep that in the forefront of my mind. I need to wonder who I would have been then so that I can be better now. I need to be brave now. God needs you to be brave now. To act nonviolently so that we can create a space for God to come and be. Nonviolence isn't easy, but it's not weak. It's the strongest thing you can do to not actively trying to hurt somebody, but to bring them closer to an understanding of who God is. So this week, I hope that you would do a brave thing. I wonder what it could be. Because I know that God is calling you to do something phenomenal, full of peace within your life. Amen. We now transition to a time of prayer here at Path, Path Parish. Over the course of these next couple of minutes, we'll invite you to jot down prayers in the comment section below or off to the side, to spend some time in reflection of things that you need to lift up, whether they're joys or concerns. In a few minutes, we'll come back together and Reverend Meredith will lead us in a, in a communal prayer together before closing out in our Lord's Prayer. So if you would, please pray with me. Would you join me in the prayers of the people? Holy One, today we pray for all of the people all over the world in their daily life and work. For our families, our friends, our neighbors, and for those who feel like they are and those who physically are alone. We pray for all of our community helpers, from healthcare workers to grocery store employees. We pray that all would experience the reality of how essential we are to one another. We pray for this community, for the cities of Jersey City and Hoboken, for our state and our nation and our world. We pray for justice, freedom, and peace. We pray for a peaceful transference of power in this week's inauguration. We also pray for peace 
and all of our political spaces and systems, our state capitals, our civic conversations. We need an infusion of grace and peace and justice. We give thanks for those who in uh, commemorance of the Martin Luther King Day on Monday will be engaging in acts of service in their community. May this be for us not just a day off, uh, but a day to lean in to what it means to be an active part of seeking justice in our beloved community. We pray for the for your creation. We pray for victims of hunger and fear and injustice and oppression. For those whose job insecurity has turned to food and housing insecurity in the midst of this pandemic. For the ever-present need that we have to continually repent of the sin of racism as it continues to emerge in our neighborhoods and in our news feeds. We pray for all who are in danger, who are in sorrow or any kind of trouble, and for those who minister to the sick and the friendless and the needy. We pray particularly for those who are concerned about the violence that is possible in the days ahead and we lift up those whose families have been deployed specifically to those who are meeting the needs of threats that have come upon the nation's capital. We pray for peace and unity both in our nation and we and we pray this within our church as well, within the church universal. For all those who proclaim the gospel and all those who seek to live in the light that we just acknowledged and continue to celebrate um, following the Epiphany season. We pray for the leaders of these two churches, both lay and clergy, and for all who serve God and God's church. We pray that we might be faithful as your church. We pray for justice in the world, and we pray for hope for ourselves and for those around us. As we consider the prayers of those in this community, I would invite you now to include the names of those for whom you know we need to be in prayer in the comment section of the worship service. And I will also spend this time praying for the names that are known to us now. We remember the life of Georgina and we pray comfort for George and for his family as they continue to grieve her loss. For those who are homebound because of this pandemic, for Anna and for Audrey. For those who are stepping into newness, for new marriages, new births, for those applying for new schools and new jobs, we give thanks. For those among us who we know continue to remain in our prayers for Pushpa, Gloria, Islin, and Robert. And we continue to pray for and name the tragedy that is 393,000 in the United States and now over 2 million throughout the world who are known to have died because of COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And I would like to close us now with the prayer that our Lord taught us. Please join with me in whatever language and form is most familiar and meaningful to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now let's join together in our closing hymn. All right, just a couple of quick announcements before we head out of this virtual space back into the world to go and do good within God's world. Announcement number one. We're looking for some, some people to help us out with our social media. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a group of people who are already starting to think through how we can best uh, reach uh, people within the world uh, via our social media. If that's something you'd like to help us out with, either conceiving a plan to do that, or if you're good at um, uh, uh, putting together websites and things like that, or if you're just a, an excellent storyteller. If you know how to tell a good story, let us know. Uh, feel free to drop your, your, uh, your information in the comments below, or you can email us uh, your information so we can get you involved in what's going on. Uh, announcement number two. If you're able to give to our ministry here at Path Parish, we give thanks for that. You know, it's only because of each and every one of you that we are able to continue to do dynamic ministry within the world. So if that's something that you can give to, we ask you to give generously. If you take a look in the comments section below, actually uh, just down below there a little bit, you'll see two different uh, ways to give to our ministry and we invite you uh, to take part in that. Uh, you can do it online, uh, and that's something that uh, our family has done for the last eight years. We know that it's safe, uh, and we, uh, we find that it's very easy for us. So if, if you could, please give to our ministry. Uh, and finally, uh, during Lent this year, we're actually going to be having uh, on Wednesdays uh, an opportunity for you to ask questions to the pastor, and the pastor will answer those questions. It's kind of like what we did a few weeks ago with the uh, question and answer sermon. I'll, each and every week, I will take one question uh, and I will answer it uh, on, on Wednesdays for you. So if you have any questions that have been bubbling up, feel free to drop it. Uh, you know, head over to this website right here and you can uh, drop your questions there. You know, that's a brave space. It's a safe space. We, we're not here to uh, make fun of you or anything like that, but it is an opportunity for you to ask any deep questions that you might have uh, that you would like to see answered. But as we go from this space, as we go from this place, take this blessing with you. The work of Reverend King continues on to this day. We see it. We yearn for it. We need it in order to recognize God's place and how God can create big things through each and every one of us. So as you go from this place, be brave. Speak with compassion. Speak with conviction to those who have darkness in their eyes. Because it's through you that God does amazing things. So do good, create change, 
and stay humble. In the name of the one who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. Go in peace and have a fantastic week.